Hey everyone and welcome back to Island Works. I'm sitting here in what I believe to be the fastest Porsche 964 that I could ever build in my garage. Uh, dreaming a little bit how it will feel once this car is finished, which by the looks of it is not very far off right now. Last time we fixed up the, the cam towers on the engine, nearing completion. This time we're going to set the cams, the valve lash, close up the engine so that the power plant is pretty much done. Uh, really exciting, let's have a look at that. Okay, so this episode starts off where the last episode left off. I think I've used that line before. Um, anyway, this, uh, this engine now is complete in the sense that I have the cylinder heads on both sides installed. I have the, the cam towers installed on both sides. Everything is torqued down, ready to rock. Uh, I've installed the, the cams to, to see that they move nicely. I've actually installed the rockers as well, but I'll likely have to remove those now. The task for today is assemble up the, the chain drive. Once the chain drive is assembled, we're going to look at setting the timing of the camshafts so that the camshafts actually open and close the valves just when the, uh, the piston is at the top dead center. That's very important in a four-stroke engine, otherwise it doesn't work. Uh, so, uh, let's start with just getting the, the chain drive on this side assembled. I have actually already assembled it on the other side. Uh, so let's get on with this one and see how that works. So this chain drive consists of a number of different pieces. Really no fuss about any of these pieces. You have the, the camshaft, or sorry, the cam chain that is attached to your intermediate shaft on the, uh, uh, the intermediate shaft that, that is driven by the, the camshaft itself. So the camshaft sits up here, it's, it spins with the RPM of the engine, and then you have the intermediate shaft sits down here, it spins with half of the RPM of the engine. So, so that one drives this one, and then that opens the valves, right? So uh, we need to get this house on top of this thing here, because this, this house here, this is what, what uh, the, the chain drive sits within. It has a number of oil channels into it that distributes oil to, to different parts here. Uh, I'm not going to go through what those are. Uh, I will assemble this on the engine though, so let's start with that. Um, so there's no fuss about getting this done. We're just going to put it up. Something like this. And then just add the bolts to it there. There's a, there's a very important seal in the middle there that I installed. So um, I'm not showing you the details of how to put the, the, the chain housing in there because there's nothing to it. Uh, what I will show you is the next piece which is installing this little guy here. This is the end stopper piece and the sealing piece between this, uh, this chain housing and the cam housing because it's, it's really open air in between here and between these two, two compartments. So this is a very complicated seal. Uh, I'm uh, not sure how well it works in practice, but it is there. Uh, so this one has first a little face seal. You see that there, a little face seal. And then it has a really thick O-ring uh, because these two components, they obviously move in relation to each other once the engine is running. Uh, so I'm gonna put this one in here and try to get it to, to stick. And the brilliant thing with the Boxster engine is that it's such a beautiful engine design, fully balanced and all these things. The bad thing with the Boxster engine is that it's a lot of parts. And this is really the, the thing for, for this Boxster engine with all these loose compartments in uh, connection to each other. Uh, this piece here sits there to seal off between the chain housing and it sits there also to provide an end stop for the camshaft so that the camshaft doesn't, uh, doesn't move freely in both directions. Uh, so I will show you in a second here what that means. <laughs> so what this means is that Actually, there is a little washer there, and, and then there's a big nut sitting here. 
And what this means is that this camshaft can't really move too much outside of where this washer sits. Uh, so there is a shim pack that you install here. I'm not going to show you how that is done, but uh, it's good to know that the position of this washer is actually what sets the whole position of the camshaft. So we have that one in there. We're going to put the, the, the chain drive in there. Before we do that, we're going to put the two chain guides in here. For this, uh, for this beautiful chain to run here and, and not run like this, there is a chain guide in the bottom that looks like this. And there's another chain guide in the top that looks like this. And these two, they squeeze the chain together so that the chain is under tension. And this is a little bit tricky to, to get this, uh, this in there. Actually, it looks the other way around. This one is up there and that one is down there. Never, nevertheless, they're, they're in there. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to install this one first, see if we can get it in there. And this guy sits with a little bit of a guide bolt in there. So that one sits through here and it can move in, in a few directions. So I'm going to see if I can get this one in here. And once I have it in there, I'm going to try to get this, this bolt in there and through. And then you have the bottom one, and the bottom one is different, because the bottom one actually pivots to, to keep the tension in there. So I'm going to try to get the chain out there. I'm going to try to, to get this guy in here, if I can. See if I can see the little hole there. And then simply put this guy in there. I'm not covering the whole thing there. Okay, so we now have this one in here that could, if everything is set up correctly, could be there and, and stabilize this whole thing. Then you have this little wheel here that sits here and, and drives the sprocket. This by itself doesn't uh, fix the rotation. You can see there's a little keyway in there and you need to fix that keyway with this, I think it's called a Woodruff key, I'm not sure. Uh, so this one goes into the camshaft. Uh, and this one, it's down here. And you need to figure out a way how to get that in straight. It's quite difficult, actually. But once you get it in straight, you can just slide this wheel on top of it, like that. So now it's fixed. All right, so that's fixed. Now we need to get the sprocket on there. Sprocket looks like this, right? Uh, it's the same on left and right side, but they sit in different directions. So important to get the orientation correct. I'm gonna see if I can push it in here. Can't remember if you're supposed to do this with the guides in or with the guides out. So this is gonna be a little bit of a surprise now. Apparently, you can do it with the guides in, because it worked. And the last thing I'm going to do, I'm, I'm not completely done with everything here yet, but I'm going to just put this bolt on there so that I secure this. Okay, so the last little thing is to install this little guide here that makes sure that these stay in, in order. I did detect that I have a little damage on mine here, so I will have to replace this once everything is done. That's a small little thing. Uh, now that we have this in, actually the, the chain drive actually sits here. Uh, and the, the purpose with one of them being fixed and the other one being loose here is that one is supposed to keep the chain completely tensioned. Very important, otherwise this engine will be very noisy and the valve, uh, the valve timing will not be correct because the, the wheel will then be going back and forth. And these little tensioners, they, they look like this, right? Uh, they have varied over the years with Porsche. They used to be mechanic and nowadays they are hydraulic. So, so this little guy, once it gets fed oil in the bottom here, 
it actually builds up pressure. And the spring and the pressure together, that pushes this thing up. And, and this guy then sits down here and it pushes the whole thing up like this. Uh, and then once the oil pressure comes in, it pushes even more. So it, it's really hard. It's, it's really a lot of pressure. So um, that's, that's all fine. The problem is you don't have hydraulic pressure once you're doing this. So you have to come up with something else. Uh, so I've done a little Island Works special here. Uh, it is uh, just a little printed piece with a bolt going through it. Right? So the purpose with this one is that I can jam it up here like that. And now that I have this one in here, I can actually screw this one up. until this one is really tight. Uh, so actually, now the chain drive is assembled. It's a static pressure applied to it, not like with the hydraulic tensioners, a, a dynamic pressure that pushes it in all the time. But this one is pushing up here, it's very tight. The other chain drive is assembled, I have the same thing there. Uh, I'm gonna try turning the engine and, and see how this feels. And having everything assembled, we turn here and it is running very smoothly. Really happy to see that. Uh, with that, we're gonna get on to aligning the, the cam shafts with the, the actual crankshaft. Uh, very important in a four-stroke engine to do that. What we're now trying to do is that since this is a Boxster engine and the, the pistons go in this direction, uh, we wanna make sure that this camshaft is in the direction of the compression stroke when this piston is all the way up at the same time as this camshaft is in the exact opposite, the exhaust stroke. So we're gonna start with doing a base setting first and after we've done the base setting, we're gonna do the, the fine tuning. The way the base setting is done is locking up the, the camshaft towards the sprocket on this side first, turning it until this one is horizontal and then doing the fine tuning after that. The, the way that this works is you have a little cylinder like this. See that? This little cylinder or sprint or whatever we want to call it, this one fits exactly on a spark plug. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this one in here. All right? I put it in there so that this is now locked in. So when I turn here, this one is actually going to turn and I'm going to turn this just exactly as long as I need to do to have the logo on this camshaft exactly horizontal. Uh, I don't know if this is exactly the way you should do it, but this is how I do it. So now that I've done this, I'm going to take it out so the camshaft stands still and then I'm going to turn this so that we have the top dead center exactly upwards. Just like that. Okay, so now I have a base setting. There we go. And I did the same on the other side. I just installed the uh, or did a rough adjustment on the camshaft so that it's roughly the same. Uh, now that I have that done, I'm installing the, the rockers on the first cylinder and the fourth cylinder. The reason why I'm installing the rockers now is I need to now measure the, uh, the valve opening so that I have the right valve opening as the camshaft is in a certain angle. So, so this is a little bit of a tricky piece that we're gonna get to just now. Okay, so I got the, the rocker installed here. So now that I have a, a rough adjustment on this, I can actually set the valve lash. The valve lash is done easiest with one of these ones. So this is just a little holder with a 0 0.10 feeler gauge in the end, right? So as I get this one in here, right? Can you see that? Yeah. As I get this one here in between the elephant foot, as I get that in between there and the valve, I need to trim this, this down so that I have 0 0.10 millimeters in clearance there, right? And this clearance is usually given in the, uh, the camshaft instructions. 
Um, this takes a little bit of uh, practice, getting a little bit of a feeling for this. So for example, that was way too tight. Uh, I can't, I can't even move it here. So, so I need to untighten a little bit, just move it just a little bit. That feels pretty good. Feels pretty good. And I usually take it out and then I wiggle it a little bit and see if I can get it in again. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty good. And you know what? I'll just tighten it just a little bit more. There we go. So, okay, so now this one has 0 0.10 clearance. And, and the thing is, as you've done a few of these, you start learning a little bit how it's supposed to feel. So, yeah, feels good. Feels good. So, and as you do this, it's always good to have a little bit of a sense check to look at where the rocker actually touches the camshaft. So you make sure that it's really on the back of the camshaft. Uh, the purpose of having this clearance is, is only because you wanna really make sure that the valve closes properly. So it's, it's not a very super scientific reason that it has to be exactly 0 0.1 millimeters. It just needs to be enough so that the valve absolutely closes perfectly without uh, being too little for the heat expansion of the engine. Because right? it will be a little bit less when the engine is hot. So something like that. And some people think this is like a, a, a super science doing valve lash. But it's not. It really is not. That was a little bit too loose. There we go. So this side is done. And the other brilliant thing with the Boxster engine is that it is so simple to just get on with the other side. So and now for the magic, the cam timing. Uh, to do the cam timing, you're measuring how much the intake or the exhaust valve, depends on how you want to do it, you measure how much this is opening at a certain angle. So I'm going to do it at top dead center, and I'm going to do it for the intake valve, where these cams are supposed to lift 3.37 millimeters, right? Uh, to do that, you need two things. You need a little bracket and you need a, a micrometer or dial micrometer or whatever measuring device like this one here that measures how deep something is, right? Really good. Uh, this guy here, this bracket, I got this from, from JFT, from Philippe. Uh, really nice guy. He has helped me out with a few things here and there. So it's a really good. This thing is super handy when you do this. Uh, you put this one on top of, of your valve cover and, and just bolt this one down. And as you get this one down there, what you end up with is a perfectly inclined little, little measurement hole just here. And in this one, you put this one. And what happens then is that this guy now measures how much this valve is lifting. And that's what I need to be able to, to set the cam timing. So let's uh, give it a try, see if it works. As I do this little test spin, I'm really gonna zoom in on the top there. So you see a little bit how this actually behaves. And as you can see, nothing, nothing, nothing until it starts adding up, right? Uh, and it opens to a certain amount and then, of course, the valve closes. And then it's at zero because you're at the area where you have the, the clearance on the valve, right? So, so nothing will happen in this area until you get to the lobe where the valve opens up again. And there you see it starts opening again. And to do the actual timing of the shafts, I will hold it here and I will turn until I see the, the value up here, which is supposed to be the 3.37 millimeters. I will turn until I see that. I will stop, disconnect, turn again, and then connect. Let's, let's step through it a bit here. So it starts opening, 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 opening. And there I should stop, right? So what I can see now is that this guy is at 3.41. Target was 3.37. 
I can see that this guy, the Z1, is not exactly at top dead center, which is there. All right, so this is how much discrepancy I have. So I'm gonna go up here, I use my spark plug. So now I'm gonna turn this guy two revolutions until this is exactly top dead center. And then I'm gonna put this back. Okay, so I'm gonna turn two lacks here. So one, and then two, and now I have to be as accurate as I can. There. Put this pin in again. Find the hole that it fits in. There we go. And now we're going to turn it two laps again. So one and then two. And we're going to go up to the measurement up here. And let's see. Go one, two, oh, 3.85. Ah, I'm going to have to spin another one time. One, two. Three point thirty seven. And I'm exactly at top dead center. Exactly. So that's how you set the cam timing. Not more than that. Need to do the other side. I will check it a number of times just to see that it really sticks, but this looks like it's just a very lucky shot, I would say. Usually this takes like 10 times to do. Uh, but I will try it a number of times again, see that I'm happy with it, do the other side, do all the valve lash on all the other ones, and put the engine together. Cam timing done on one side, you do the same on the other side. Once you've done that, you put all of the rest of the rockers in torque them down, check that everything is good the, the way that it's supposed to be. Make sure you lubed it up a little bit where, where it needs to be as well. Uh, set the, uh, the valve lash on all of the remaining valves and then you put the covers on and, and you're really done with, with the inside of, of the engine. So I'm gonna just finish this up. And, and who would have thought that after all this hassle I would be in a position where I'm actually putting the covers back on the engine. Uh, this started out as me just doing an inspection on my engine, finding that it was complete devastation inside of one of the cylinders. Uh, and I ended up doing quite a few things as I was just fixing that problem, changing pistons to higher compression, lighter motorsport pistons, uh, changing to 993 cam tower so I get the better oiling on the, the rocker shafts, changing to powder rocker shafts, and uh, yeah, just, just making sure that the engine is in good trim as I put everything together, which, as you can see, I'm doing right now. And it's pretty exciting for me just getting that piece done. Uh, this just about concludes what we're going to do today with, with fixing up the cam timing and, and doing the valve lash and all that. Next time around, I'm not sure it's going to be engine stuff, but it's going to be something really fun related to building the fastest Porsche 964 that I could ever build in my garage. See you then.